For over 40 years, the Black Country Museum has stood as a constant reminder of the region's rich industrial heritage. Between the hot orange furnaces in the chainmaker's yard and burning coal gathered from mine shafts, the area is hidden with stories from an age ago. This short documentary aims to explore the museum's historical impact on the local people and businesses of the day. Beginning with the proposed idea to develop a museum by local people in the 1950s, it was the Metropolitan Borough Council of Dudley who first established a museum section in 1966. Over the coming decade, the range of artefacts and memorabilia connected to the Black Country increased, and by 1976, members of staff moved forward with the expansion of this open-air museum. The label this region has become associated with, the Black Country, was fashioned as in the 1840s a thick layer of black soot covered the area due to coal mining exploits, which may be a strong indication as to why it was given this name. Fast forwarding to the present day, the site has become the UK's third most visited open air museum, welcoming more than 300,000 visitors through its gates each year. The interactive hosts play a big role in bringing an authenticity and likeness to the roles they undertake, and this is a unique feature of the Living Museum's attraction. To bring this sentiment to life, museum staff and demonstrators introduce their own passion and connections to the Black Country's history. So my name is Helen Taylor, I'm one of the curators here at the Black Country Living Museum. Um, so in general terms I look after all the objects, all the stuff that's in the store, um, the buildings on site are classed as objects, um, so I look after all the stuff that's in them as well. So the, the Black Country Living Museum is um, unique because it is an open air living museum. So there's 26 acres that people can explore. Um, there's buildings that have been relocated from other places in the Black Country. They can go into actual um, shops um, and see what it would have been like to, to go into the um, general store or the chemist. My name is Sam Jones and I'm a volunteer in the trap shop. I've been a volunteer in the Black Country Mu Living Museum now for five years. Uh, I, my job here is to give the visitors an insight of what happened or what people's life was when uh, this factory was built in 1913. My name is Donald Stevens, and I work at the boat dock, the uh, Black Country Living Museum. Uh, I do general jobs to keep maintenance on the, the boats uh, and just general maintenance around the, the boat dock. So people come here because they, they may have links with, with the past that we represent. Um, so they may have people that were chain making or nail making or work in any of the industries that we represent in their family. It's interactive, you can talk to people, um, you can ask questions. It's nice to have somebody to explain this shop to you, rather than just come in and walk back out again. That's normally what would happen if, if, if we were here. We could tell uh, the visitors that the, the way that the, the families lived on the narrowboats, the way they worked, uh, the companies who owned some of the narrowboats, from the 1870s onwards, the city of Birmingham and its surrounding counties, known as the Black Country, were sinking into slumps of extreme poverty. These neighbouring towns, including the general West Midlands area, were rife with overcrowded slums and crime quickly spread through the streets. Through the sooty air and harsh sound of industry machines came the chance for opportunists to claim this land. One of the most feared gangs were known as the Sloggers. Taking over local areas such as Small Heath and Cheapside around Birmingham, this group were branded as the Sloggers because of the heavy buckled belts they could use to deal with anyone in their path. Another criminal outfit, who would also become notoriously recognised for their weapons of choice, emerged as the adversary and ultimate downfall of the Sloggers. They were called the Peaky Blinders. 
The drama's creator, Stephen Knight, once called the museum the home of the Peaky Blinders and has maintained filming here on location for every series thus far. Furthermore, the museum's themed evenings have proven extremely popular with visitors from all over the country. Peaky Blinders, everybody's dressed up as a Peaky Blinder when they come and it don't really go, you know, you go into it and it's really, it's really nice to see. I'm, I'm from the black country, I live locally. When the Peaky Blinders came here, yes, it was it's extremely popular. We help out um, on the night when it's, when it's busy, so a lot of the people that work in the offices will then go and work in bars and do goss collecting or they'll be stewarding or helping out. These are just a few of the reasons why the Black Country Living Museum remains as one of the country's best-loved attractions to this very day.